as before, I have prepared a file called gitoperations.txt in the associate file for the course. So feel free to follow along. So don't worry about it if we've gone too fast on the screen or you want to go back to previous steps. So go ahead and follow this file as I have listed out here so we could you know, just kind of take it step by step and follow through all the operations. So first of all, of course, in order to use Git, we have to install it. Installation is pretty straightforward and you could be found on this git-scm.com webpage. And uh, it has different links and instructions for installing on Linux, Mac OS, Windows, and so on. I won't repeat it here just because it's pretty straightforward and chances are you already have Git on some of the machines. So I will not repeat that. However, once you install it, you could use the Git config to configure some of the operations or options that we will use uh, in Git. So for example, I could just use Git config to look at all the options that I could do. The two options that we want to pay closer attention to is the global user.name as well as the user.email. I've already done that, but go ahead and configure those uh, unless you've already done it. But if you haven't done so, go ahead and configure that using the git config global for username and password. Let me go ahead and enlarge this text real quick. So go ahead and configure those. And if there are extra configuration options for me, I like to use Vim as my editor if I want to type out a longer commit message. So that could also be configured uh, here as well. And all the options are actually be stored in the .git config file. If it's global, then it's your home directory .git config. If it's uh, local config changes in just for this repository, then it's it's locally in that directory as well as in the .git and then in the config option. And so there are two ways to work on a Git repository. You could either initialize a empty directory and make it a Git repository, or you could just copy in an existing Git repository. So I'm going to show how to copy in a Git repository first. And I have prepared a repository just on my GitHub account. And this is a public one. So feel free to clone this if you like. But since this is free, you know, I would encourage you to just sign in or sign up and then go ahead and create your own account and then create your own repository. So once you've created that repository, you could come down here and then there's a link for clone or download. So you go ahead and copy this or highlight this and copy that. And in order to clone an existing Git repository, we're going to use the git clone command. So let me go ahead and do this git clone and type in that or that link address. And now that I have a LinkedIn DevNet test repository, if I CD down, I could see I actually have all the three files that is on that repository. So alternatively, we could also create a directory and then initialize that directory as a uh, Git repository using git init. So let me go ahead and do this. I'm going to make a directory called my repository. And then I'm going to CD down to my repository and using a git init. So let me go ahead and do this. If I do a list, it's pretty empty. And if I do a git init, and if I do a list, now I see uh, there's a hidden file called Git. So if I go ahead and look at what's contained in that directory, oops, sorry, I could see there's a, a lot of metadata that's associated with this directory, especially to keep uh, all the references, objects, and so on, as well as config. So that is how you make that repository, a directory, a Git repository. And one of the few things that you would do it first is you could do a Git status. And of course, uh, you would tell you some information, but since this is an empty directory, so there's not much information yet. However, we could see that there's something called the master branch, which we'll look at in just a bit. So in order to add a file, we're right now on step four. So we could go ahead and create a file by using a touch file one. Now we have that file. And we could look at git status. Now, because this is a git, repository, it's giving you a hint and say there's a file that's on track and uh, I would imagine that we need to go ahead and track it, right? So it even gives you a hint right here, it says use git add to track it and uh, to put it into a staging area. So let's do that. So we use git add file one and if I do a git status, you can see that now it's being tracked but it's not committed just yet. 
So if we go ahead and just add that file as we've already added, then we could do git commit. We use the dash m options. Uh, just because we're, you know, remember git always enforces a commit message for accountability. So we have to have a message. If you don't do the dash m option, it's going to lead you to use your local editor to edit the commit message. But since we're just such a short commit message, we're just going to use the dash m option. So we just say, go ahead and add it, add file one. How's that? And now we're looking at git status and nothing to commit and the tree is clean. And if we do a git log, now we could see that now we have the first commit that we've added uh, file one. So the next step is actually how or when do we make changes to file one uh, and then how we could commit that change as well. So if we just do vim file one, we say making some changes, go ahead and save that file. If I do git status, now it's saying, hey, the file is being modified. So if I do the same thing again, file one, git commit, modify file one. Now we, if you look at git log, let's look at git status first, just for grins. Yeah, so the tree is clean. So if I do like git log, now I have two operations. First one was adding the file and second one was uh, modifying that file. So how about if we want to remove that file? Here's probably a good step to introduce to you of the idea that there are actually multiple ways to do operations, whether it's uh, creating a branch and checking out a branch, which we'll see later, or removing a file. I am providing a way that's more intuitive and more in tune of what we've done so far. So here's what I would show as far as removing a file. But this is not the only way to remove a file, right? We could do a git remove. But what I want to do is I'm just going to remove file one as I would normally do in, in Linux. And if I do a git status, I could see that this file is deleted and it gives me the hint that I still need to add that file so I could add this change at file one and then git commit, remove file one. Now if I do git status, uh, there's nothing to be committed. And if I do a git log, now I can see the three operations, adding, modifying, and then finally removing that file. Cool. So now we're ready to move on to the next example.